and welcome back to the Over 40s Fitness Podcast. My name is Tristan Lowe and for those of you watching on YouTube, you can see here I have in my hand a copy of the soundtrack or the score, excuse me, to the original uh, Joker movie from about four years ago starring Joaquin Phoenix and Robert De Niro. And uh, the reason that I brought this up today is because Joker Part 2 uh, gets released this week too much um, to a lot of uh, poor reviews. Now, for those of you that have seen the movie, uh, what's um, the Joker movie uh, got to do with health and fitness? Well, I'll tell you. The method actor, we'll call him that, Joaquin Phoenix, some would call him just an actor, uh, lost uh, approximately 50 to 52 pounds of body weight to play uh, Arthur Fleck, aka uh, Joker, in the original movie. That's a lot of weight, you know. That's like uh, four stone plus, if you look at four, uh, 42 pounds is three stone. If he lost 52 pounds, three stone 10, for those of you in the UK, but those in America, I think it was 50 to 52, uh, 52 pounds. That's a lot of weight. That's the best part of four stone. Uh, and that comes off a guy, I think he's about five, nine, maybe five, 10. He's not a, a, a particularly uh, big actor. Hence he played Napoleon uh, a year and a half ago. But now, um, yo-yo dieting um, to lose weight. Actors were doing this back in the 70s, as far as I know. And of course, actors such as, you know, Robert De Niro, he lost a lot of weight to play Taxi Driver, which I think is the blueprint. Um, Taxi Driver and of course, um, the king of comedy, they were essentially the blueprints for the, uh, the, two, the, uh, the later version of Joker. But Robert De Niro would lose weight uh, for uh, Taxi Driver. He put on weight to play um, Jake LaMotta in Raging Bull, he put on, I think it was three or four stone of excess weight and fat and had his hair plucked for, he played, um, uh, I think he played uh, the lead role uh, in The Untouchables, you know, um, and uh, of Al Capone. And then he bulked up again with muscle to play Max Cady in Cape Fear. So Robert De Niro has been doing it for years, Arnie and Sly, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone, you know, bulked up and put on a lot of muscle for their movies in the 70s and 80s and probably into the uh, mid 90s. And they would strip down again. Stallone uh, reportedly put on the most muscle possible for Rocky IV and Rambo III. And then of course he got his forearms and grip worked and his back worked to play uh, the climber in Cliffhanger. But let's look at it. And of course, other actors in the modern era as well. Um, I think people like Christian Bale, uh, Brad Pitt, those guys have got themselves into you know, superb physical condition. I think Brad Pitt, if you look at him in Fight Club, I think he got his body fat down to single figures, got ripped to shreds, got the big eight pack abdominals and uh, worked hard on uh, personal training with his personal trainer and his dietitian. And of course, had the fight scenes to play Tyler Durden in, uh, in Fight Club. Um, and here we are now, uh, Joker 2 has come out and uh, I've not yet seen it, but what I can tell you is that Joaquin Phoenix, being an actor, stroke method actor, got himself again into that condition because he was uh, a little bit a little bit chubby, a little bit rotund, a little bit overweight carrying to play Napoleon. And now here he is now playing this guy. So I would say that um, that some actors actually train like athletes. They diet like athletes or they diet like pro bodybuilders or they diet like someone who has to lose weight for medical reasons or to, to go under the knife. And uh, I would say yo-yo dieting like that, even if you're paid a lot of money to do it. I think reportedly, Joaquin Phoenix was paid something in the region of $30 million uh, to sign up to play Arthur Fleck again in Joker Part 2. That's a lot of money. I would do it for a lot less than that, lose weight or put on weight. But let's look at it. When you lose weight like that, um, it not only affects the soft tissue, the muscle, it affects your organs as well. It affects your nervous system, your circulatory system, your respiratory system, all the main systems in the body, even the, uh, the skin, because the skin is actually a system. It doesn't just affect your body weight or your body fat, it can affect your skeletal structure. Um, when you're losing so much weight in a, in a relatively short period of time. But one thing can also affect, and that's the grey matter, it can affect your mind, it can affect your mood, um, it can affect your thought making process. And that's why um, insomniacs, uh, reportedly, and we're not talking someone who has a poor night's sleep, we're talking insomniac, someone who's being diagnosed by a physician um, that they're actually suffering from insomnia. Um, and those people sometimes, they sleep, you know, two or three or four hours broken a night for five, 10 years, and it, it's, it's chronic um, to a point of, um, to a point of almost, um, not just confusion, but I would almost say 
um, a, a descent into into madness, if that's a, a word, there'll be a proper word for it. Um, but what can happen is because a, uh, an individual, man or woman, um, suffers from insomnia, their bodies get rid of um, something that's uh, greedy and dense and hungry, that's muscle. The bodies will get rid of muscle first because they're not getting that deep sleep to repair. It will hold on to body fat for a while and eventually get rid of some body fat first. But the first thing it will do is dump muscle and then fluid and then fat. Uh, and that's why if you look at Christian Bale in the film, uh, the, uh, the Mechanic, I think it was called The Mechanic or The Machinist, whatever it was, early in his career, before he played um, Bruce Wayne in The Batman Begins, he lost, I think it was in the region of four stone, maybe even more, um, to play uh, the character, the lead role of the insomniac, um, the gentleman who actually spent all night hanging around airports and street corners because he couldn't sleep. Um, and for those of you that have seen the movie, you'll see what, how his body became completely emaciated. It's actually quite frightening to see. And then I think he put on 35 pounds of muscle, apparently, to play Bruce Wayne, a.k.a. the Batman, in the first of the Christopher Nolan trilogy of the Dark Knight movies. And he put on that weight proper back and shoulders, chest, upper legs. wasn't just putting on some biceps or what have you. That takes a lot of calories, a lot of sleep, a lot of weight lifting, you know. Um, a lot of work, even though they are being remunerated well by Hollywood, by the producers, and of course the people that put the, uh, the bums on seats, the cinema chains. So, but it comes at a price. And um, often uh, these method actors who play with their body weight, I think Tom Hanks lost and put on a lot of weight in the film Castaway. Well, he actually did. Whether he lost the weight first or put it on after, I don't know how long the shoot was for the movie. But Tom Hanks said it really did affect him. Um, a lot of them end up um, ill as well. They can get disorders, blood disorders, brain disorders, whatever you want to call it. But they put themselves under a lot of pressure. Um, and if you look at the, the modern day action stars like Dwayne Johnson, um, a.k.a. The Rock. I mean, that guy is a, is a professional athlete. He came from WWE or WWF wrestling. He was already a big you know, specimen or an actor, but then put on an incredible amount of visible muscle for his movie roles. And I think, don't quote me on this, but quote me on this, I think by his own admission, he had help, if you know what I mean. There's only so many bicep curls and chicken breasts that can get you to look like that in a matter of a couple of years, even though he was already a big uh, muscle-bound entertainer. Um, but fair play. If uh, an actor has to, start, has to take, uh, take um, anabolics or steroids or legal or illegal uh, steroids to get themselves into great shape, and they know the actual... You know, they know the consequences if things go wrong. They get their blood, uh, blood tests on regular. They work with top physicians based in or, out of, uh, in or out of America. And they get themselves into great shape for movies. And again, they're well paid for it. But of course, with modern technology, modern nutrition, the studies, pharmaceuticals, doctors, physicians, um, you know, nutritionists, there's a lot more research that goes into um, any pharmaceutical assistance that an actor would take to get themselves into shape. I think uh, famously Sylvester Stallone was uh, arrested um, and fined. I think it was like a hundred thousand dollars or something in Australia when he was caught going through customs with anabolic steroids. And I think he was shooting one of the uh, the latter Rambo movies, one of the corny ones that no one went to see. But but still, and of course he was Sylvester Stallone. He was a multimillionaire and he paid his fine, paid his dues, but he got in shape for the movie. Yeah, no one cares what you done. They want to, they care what you look like when it comes to making the film. So. Yeah, so I think the most recent version then of the Joker, Joaquin Phoenix would have lost a lot of weight again. Bearing in mind, they didn't shoot those movies back to back. There's three to four years between them. So it's not like they shot Joker one and two back to back and he'd already lost those 42, 50, 52 pounds, excuse me. He put that weight back on, if not all of it, then a big chunk of it for his health reasons. And he was interviewed recently as well. And, uh, you know, he, he knows the uh, the consequences of doing that, that yo-yo dieting, that yo you know, but they want the accolades. They want that. They want the realism when they make their movies. They want to get paid for their movie. And sometimes I think the roles as part of the contracts actually dictate that they've got to put on weight or lose weight for movies. You've only got to look at Chris Hemsworth, the sheer size and muscle that he put on to play Thor in the Thor movies and the, um, and the Marvel, what are they called? the Avenger movies. That's a lot of weight that guy put on. Now, granted, he would have been in his 20s and 30s at the time, so he's possibly in his prime. But I would say, again, there's only so many bicep curls and chicken breasts 
that put on that much muscle and that much size. And if you had assistance, if Chris Hemsworth had assistance to get that big uh, for those roles, no problem with them. I've got no problem with that whatsoever. That's his decision, that's his body, you know, that's his body and mind uh, and mood. And I'm sure he would have consulted a top physician, a top, um, a top uh, dietitian, and got his blood test done on a regular basis to make sure that the organs are working and they're not failing, right? End up in renal failure or something like that. So here we are now in October 2024. And if you go and see Joker part two, uh, imaginatively titled Folly Ado, I think it's got, it's got Lady Gaga in it. From what I can hear, what I've heard, sorry, it's a parody of the first one. And I, I think they've, they've dropped the rating from an 18s or R in America down to a 15 certificate and turned it into a sort of quasi musical, uh, which is not for me. Although the woman who did the score, Hilda Guttenau, I think it's how you pronounce her surname, she wrote an incredible score for part one. And I imagine she's done a good score for part two, but I'd have to actually uh, watch it when it comes on TV. I'm not going to pay my hard earned money to see something that is reportedly an absolute uh, S show. All right, now. Health and fitness, if you're thinking of going on a diet, a crash diet, a massive weight loss diet, you know, you're 18 stone and for your height and your age and your sex, you should be 13 stone, that five stone, do it over a year or two. Don't try and do it over half a year. Yes, it's physically possible. You'll make yourself ill. You'll make yourself irritable. You'll become obsessed with weight loss and other things will go out the window. If you've got five stone to lose, that's a lot of weight. You could do it over two years and you could do it safely. In fact, you could do it over a year. You know, it's a few pounds here, a few pounds there. Sometimes your weight's gonna go up, sometimes your weight's gonna go down, irrespective of what you've done. You know, everybody's different. There are so many factors to take into account when you're losing a massive amount of weight. You don't wanna lose valuable muscle. You need muscle to stand tall, to create force and resistance, you know, to keep your metabolism high, you know, to keep your posture and a good aesthetic as well. You need muscle. So if you're you know, 18 stone and you should be 13 stone, which is 182 pounds, and you know that's how much weight you've got to lose, don't say on the 1st of November, you're gonna lose a stone by the end of November, two stone in December, no, no. You know, go for four or five pounds a month. Don't go for 12, 14 pounds a month, do it slowly. I've trained men and women that have lost, I think the most one of my clients as a personal trainer lost was 10 stone, he went from uh, 28 stone to just over 18 stone uh, over a three, maybe three and a half year period. And I was with him all the way through it. Um, and I still keep in touch with him from time to time. Good guy. I think about six foot five as well. Lost best part of 10 stone. I'd have to go and check the record to, to check exactly how many pounds it was. But I think it was around 135 to 140, 142 pounds. But wow, impressive. Um, but generally the most that a client will lose they're normally looking to lose between one and three stone. Let's say, let's say two, let's say 28 pounds. Um, and they do it, they do it because they put their mind to it, but they do it the, the correct way. You know, they don't go on crazy fad diets. They don't start drinking water and eating lettuce leaves every day. They increase their protein intake, increase their vitamin intake, and decrease their unwanted carbohydrate and fat intake. Yes, you need carbohydrates for energy. Yes, we need good fats for the nervous system and the immune system. Um, what we need is good sources, a multitude of sources of protein and good quality vitamins um, with, of course, um, exercise, movement, you know, uh, thermal, burning thermal energy. That's what we need to do. More calories out, less calories in. The math is sound, but it depends on so many things. Man, woman, short, tall, fat, thin, I don't know. It takes time. It takes um, a measured um, approach to it. And again, um, I'm not a... Uh, I'm not part of any slimming club or any Weight Watchers world or any, you know, drink this and look like this. I say to people, let's look at what's happening first. Are you sleeping well? Are you drinking water? Are you staying mobile? Are you eating your, you know, three square, no, uh, three square meals a day? Let's get those things sorted first. Then go through your cupboards, get rid of highly processed food, fatty food, sugary food, excess alcohol. Get rid of those first. Okay, and then let's concentrate on movement. Yeah, and sleep and hydration, not just running around a block with a woolly hat on, doing Instagram videos of yourself because you've taken up a 5K, 10K, whatever. That's fine to get you moving and you will lose weight, but um, physiologically, your body will start dumping muscle because it needs to get rid of that muscle so you can run efficiently and effectively. Yeah, 
If you're gonna start running, start swimming, rowing, or whatever, great, but put your resistance-based exercise as well. If you're doing homework, home exercises, get your push-ups, your squats, your sit-ups, your lunges done. If you're in the gym, pick up your dumbbells, your kettlebells, your barbells, resistance bands, slam balls, get on the fixed path machines if you have to, but make it a multitude of things. Now, and who knows, you could become an actor and end up in the next DC or the next Marvel movie and end up you know, being paid a lot of money to take weight off or put weight on, plus act as well, you know, and dance. Um, that's it. In the background, we've got one of the most famous and revered rap groups of all time. And there you've got Raekwon the Chef over here. In the middle, you've got the world famous Ghostface Killer, Ghostface Killer over here. And in the middle, Capadonna. And that's from the album Iron Man. I think it was around 1996, I think, Iron Man came out. I could be wrong. Incredible, 96, maybe even 97. One of the all-time great New York rap albums. And of course, Iron Man was another uh, fictional character from the, uh, from the comic book world, uh, Tony Stark's Iron Man, which brings me to the guy who played him over the last 10, 15 years, um, being Robert Downey Jr. And Robert Downey Jr. went through a physical transformation for his role um, in Oppenheimer. And we'll talk about that another day. And I think he may be returning to the comic book world so he'll put some weight on, you know, start eating healthy again, get himself a bit leaner, a bit bulked up, whatever you want to call it, but he'll get himself in shape because Robert Downey Jr. is a world-class actor and he's very, very well paid for his career. If you look at him in the Marvel movies, uh, the, uh, when he strips off out of the Iron Man suit and his normal uh, Tony Stark, he's actually quite, quite athletic and well-built. And then you see him in Oppenheimer, he looks physically weak and withered, but he's, he's playing a different role. So he would have got his body in shape as a method actor or a world-class actor to play that role. There you go. From Iron Man to Arthur Fleck, don't yo-yo diet. You're not a world-class actor who's been paid lots of money. You're John or Jill, whoever you are. Look after your body. If you're looking to lose weight, do it slowly. And who knows, Hollywood might beckon. Might beckon. My name is Tristan Lowe. It's the podcast for the over 40s fitness with Tristan Lowe. You can find me on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Amazon Music. Uh, until the next time, please like, subscribe and share the channel to help it grow. I don't have any sponsors. It's a small channel. All of my followers have grown organically, if that's the right word. And I'd like it to carry on growing until I get to uh, 100 episodes, hopefully within the next couple of months. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.